Hello, Mardi. Yes, it's 11 Monday night. I'm glad you <laughs> you keep in your mind my preoccupation for the hour. As you can see on my back, it's the Last Supper. It's a mosaic. It's not a fresco. I'm uh, near the church from Gimbav. And uh, hello, Miss Don. And uh, I will enter uh, pretty soon inside of the church to tell you all the stories that I'm uh, planning to tell. It's a, it's a pretty new church. I will change the image. You have to see the church, not me. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, it's, a, it's a pretty new church. It's built... Uh, it, it was ended like uh, seven years ago. It's a classic uh, Romanic church. Here in, uh, we are at about seven kilometers away from uh, from Brasov. In a small uh, in a small town in Gimbav, but the idea is that here we have uh, one of the most beautiful uh, churches from this area, painted um, into the Byzantine style, as I told you. And uh, I hope you will enjoy it. The church, uh, it was started to be ended a little bit because uh, they have to edit some, uh, some, new, uh, some new mosaic at the entrance. This is a monument dedicated to the Romanian heroes which died in the Great War. As you can see, it's written 100 Romania. It's one and uh, the infinity sign. Hello, Cheryl. It's the monument dedicated to the Romanians which died in the Great War. And now uh, I will start the tour. We have benches in front of the church for the uh, longest religious services during of the summer time. It's a church uh, dedicated to Saints Peter and Paul, as you can see here. And um, as any other uh, as any other church. Uh, from uh, from the Greek uh, Byzantine, from the Greek Orthodox uh, religion, we have the church built like uh, respecting our way to heaven during of uh, his lifetime. That's why we used to talk about the space way inside of the uh, Orthodox Church, something inspired from the Greek temples and from the Egyptian temples. As you can see, this way, this path, it's. Uh, going to the front of the altar when uh, usually the people and, and I will show it to you are meeting with uh, with Jesus Christ I will try to get uh, uh, to go up on the balcony because I want to show you a beautiful image uh, from the top this is the this is the shop of the church and I will going uh, up at the balcony to have a a beginning image of the entire uh, nave of the church. Okay. I have to close the doors behind me. And uh, I think I'm here. These are the chairs for the choir. And this is the first image of the church. Hello, Graciela. Hello, Cheryl. I will stay here for a while just to give you the possibility to take some pictures. And I will move on the other side too. Hello, Adriana. And now, uh, if you took the pictures, I will get down to show you everything much, much closer. I'm glad, Richard, you like it. So, uh, as you know, I will tell you a very brief history of the Christian Church and of the Greek Orthodox Church. Uh, after the moment when Jesus Christ fondated 
the church, um, all the all the bishops, all the people which uh, was uh, started to lead his church, his apostles, uh, was starting to create the rules of the of the future Christian religion. So uh, during of many many years were uh, organized seven ecumenical councils which decided the official gospels the bible decided uh, all the all the details of the christian religion and everything goes together like this uh, till the moment of the big schism from 15 uh, from 1054 here at the entrance of the church the first thing that you will see into a greek orthodox church is this big barrel made from from metal which uh, had inside uh, holy water which is usually um, um, made holy uh, during a, of, a, of, a of a procession of a religious uh, celebration of a religious service during of um, of the day of january 7th when we uh, celebrate uh, john the baptist after this moment we'll enter into uh, we'll enter into the church following the path to Jesus Christ, uh, passing nearby those saints, which, as you can see, uh, are staying on the top of a column. Maybe you, uh, you know about the, the saints, the people, which stayed uh, all of their lives on the top of a column, praying for us. It was, um, uh, if you want, a punishment, a self-punishment um, applied to their bodies, just to be um, uh, just to to be able to pray in front of god for uh, for all of us entering into the church we'll find always on this side the images of the founders of the church and in our case it's about the last two uh, patriarchs uh, of uh, of romania which are uh, which are depicted uh, in here. It's uh, the one in, uh, from the left in white. It's the actual uh, patriarch of the Orthodox Romanian Church. The man in black, the priest in black, it's the, it's the bishop of uh, Sibiu and of Transylvania. It's the leader of this, uh, is the spiritual leader of this part of, uh, of Romania. And on the other side, we have the uh, actual founders of the actual church. Uh, we have the priests, which uh, uh, the Komsha family, which uh, actually have the initiative of building of this church. On their back, uh, all the other people from the from this village, which paid money uh, for the construction uh, as donations for the construction of the church, protected uh, by uh, by Virgin Mary and blessed from the top by uh, by uh, by Jesus Christ. Also. In this uh, first part of the church, as you can see, the church is built pretty much like a home. So in this way, we have this porch, which is this place where I'm right now. And in this porch, usually, you are receiving your guests, no? When they are coming in, their, in your home. So that's why uh, in many, many situations, uh, here used to stay uh, the people which was uh, coming into the Orthodox Church uh, before be, be, before receiving the the baptism uh, to be uh, to be baptized, they was uh, attending to the religious services to the to the liturgy from this space. So where the guests are staying a little bit before to be admitted into the family of of their guests. Also very close to this porch, uh, it's the place where we do the um, the funerals because when somebody leaving from your home. Uh, or somebody is living from the community, from the religious community, of course, you, um, you are uh, uh, far away, you are saying far away to him, you know, at the, at the gate of your uh, home. As well, uh, here near the doors of the church, uh, we are doing the religious service in case of the baptism of the children, because they are new members of the community. And uh, speaking about the baptism, the baptism is usually done uh, at the age of 40 days of the children because um, they are considered uh, to be uh, prepared to be baptized and the baptism uh, it's uh, made by uh, by immersion 
into a big bowl of water, of warm water. And uh, after that, uh, they are receiving all the blessings of the priest and uh, the Holy Ghost come uh, over them to protect them for the rest uh, of their lives. Here on the, on the walls, we have first paintings of Romanian saints mostly, which are depicted uh, here on the walls in this, part of the, in this part of the church, on the right and on the left side. As you can see, those saints have in their hands, uh, carrying in their hands a lot of, uh, a lot of papers, a lot of pergaments, where they uh, have written a lot of advices, good advices for us to be prepared for a good Christian life. So they actually are joining us in our way uh, to Jesus Christ, which is waiting for us in front of the altar, uh, on the both sides, giving us advices and teaching us how to become uh, a very good person uh, and how to be prepared to meet Jesus Christ. As well, on the top of the church, exactly in the area where I'm right now, you can see a first icon of the Saint Trinity. is the single uh, accepted icon of the Saint Trinity in the Orthodox Church. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't show Christ or God as an old man with a long beard, not even the, not even the dove, uh, the white dove which is represented by the Holy Spirit. Are three angels on a table, it's called the, the dinner from the Mount Vri Oak. It's the name of the, of the icon and uh, represents those three uh, angels uh, taking uh, the dinner, being served by, uh, by Sarah and, and Abraham. Also, above me, it's Virgin Mary with Jesus Christ. It's a very special and very old icon of the Christians. Maybe you know it. It's called uh, Mother of God as protector of the, of the people. It's... Uh, it's her is represented with the, with the right hands, uh, blessing us and protecting us. And uh, in, uh, in front of her chest, it's Jesus Christ, um, our Savior, also, also blessing us. In, uh, in Latin or in Greek, it was called Oranta, this icon of, uh, of Virgin Mary, and uh, was a very common icon in the early years of the Christianity. As well, on the on the vaults of this church and uh, of any other Orthodox church, because are pretty much the same paintings, you can see the baptism of Christ. In here, you can see Christ on the, on the water of the River Jordan with, uh, with the angels near him being, uh, being witness to the blessing of St. John the Baptist. Above Christ, you can see the white dove, the Holy Spirit coming uh, above him, and the hands of God, as you can see it, uh, blessing everybody and saying, "This is my son. This is my uh, this is my beloved son." No, as God said in that moment. The next image. It's the. It's an image of the um, of the transformation of uh, of Jesus on the on the mountain before to go to heaven when his face became uh, brighter than the than the light of the sun. And uh, he is um, in between uh, St. John the Baptist and, uh, and Moses with the Ten Commandments and all the apostles at his, uh, at his feet. Another important moment from the life of Jesus Christ are obviously the, his miracles made by him and all the important moments of his life are depicted here. For example, he is in the middle of the wise man from the temple preaching as a young boy. The next one, it's the wedding from, uh, from Galilea, when he transformed the water in wine and was doing the, uh, and he was starting his, uh, his miracles. You can see the, the bride and the groom uh, depicted like, uh, like emperors in um, at this table because uh, usually the bride and the groom are considered uh, to be like, like the emperors in, in, in front of God because it's, uh, it's one of the most important uh, secrets I can, uh, I can call it of the, um, of the Christian church and usually during of the, of the Orthodox weddings uh, the bride and the groom are, uh, are wearing on their heads um, yes Adriana the colors are, uh, are special and I will tell you why are like this 
uh, they are wearing some uh, some small crowns on their heads the, the the real people into the religious services just to show to the people that they are uh, considered to be uh, like the emperors in front of Christ the colors and uh, all the all the paintings to respond to Adriana uh, are pretty much the same and are established uh, by one of the book called Erminie uh, and it's a book which is uh, wrote by the um, by the monks by the orthodox monks during of the centuries and uh, they uh, describe in that uh, in that Erminie in that book in that Ermini book uh, all the details of the Byzantine of the orthodox paintings from the church they knew exactly they they tell you exactly which which colors in what position what beard what color of the hair everything here, for example, you can see uh, Jesus Christ blessing the children. Coming on the, uh, coming on, uh, on the northern side, you can see on the top the, the icon which is representing the entrance into the Jerusalem of Jesus Christ. And uh, here we have the crucifixion icon. And here you can see Christ is crucified and uh, his cross, it's setting, it, it stays on a mountain, on a hill, yes, Golgotha Hill. And under the hill, uh, you can see, I will go closer, zooming a little bit. It's the skull and the bones of Adam. Are the skull and the, bo uh, and the bones of Adam. And actually, the entire painting, it's showing to us the old world of the old will. Uh, represented by the scene of Adam, which is passing by, and the new world, which starting with the crucifixion of Christ, and the and the new uh, and the new will, the New Testament. So the new uh, the new contract between God and uh, and us, the the sinners. Underneath, we have another important moment from the life of Jesus Christ. It's the prayer from Gethsemane Garden. You can see on, on his back uh, all the apostles and uh, Christ uh, praying to, uh, to his father and an angel uh, brought in him the, the cross where uh, it will be uh, crucified. Of course, here is the moment when uh, it's, uh, you can see the Judas kiss and he is uh, captured uh, and uh, brought in front of the, of, of the judges. Here, for example, it's Pilat, it's Pilatus, the, the Roman governor, which, as you can see, is washing his hands into a bowl near his, uh, near his throne, saying, as you know, I wash my hands and the blood of this man to, uh, to fall over your heads because this man is innocent. Pilat from Pont is very possible to be born in the region of the Black Sea, because, yes, I just uh, started, Tony, sorry, um, because uh, Pilat from Pont, Pontus, it was the name of the Black Sea, Pontus Euxinus, or um, the Black, uh, or the, the Calm Sea, it was uh, the first name. Actually, uh, Pontus Euxinus, it means the, um, the Stormy Sea, or the... Um, or the killer sea, because many, many, um, many, many sailors uh, died into the storms. And here you can see uh, Jesus Christ, uh, which is uh, prepared to be uh, buried into the grave. And here down here, I will show you another icon of some uh, of some Romanian saints. It's a family uh, of a ruler of Valachia called Brincovanu. You can see him here with uh, his main uh, with his main advisor uh, on the left uh, side of the image, and uh, with her uh, with his uh, four sons. He was a uh, ruler of Valachia, which is the region from the south of Romania, and. Um, uh, in 1711, after many, many years uh, of good ruling and peaceful ruling of the country, he was captured by the, by the Turks at the order of the Sultan, which uh, tried to, um, to get 
all the richness of this Romanian uh, ruler, of this Romanian prince, and he captured him, uh, his four sons, and his main advisor, and uh, lead them under, uh, under um, guarded, of course, by the guardians, to his sultan to try to obtain from them, by torture, uh, the secret where there was hidden uh, their richness. Because this richness was something uh, not real, actually, uh, the sultan couldn't take from them any kind of secret because it doesn't exist one. So that's why uh, he decided to, to execute them. And um, to be, because it was a very cruel uh, man, this Turkish sultan, he said to execute first the children of the ruler, Brnkovanu. And uh, he was forced to see uh, how was beheaded one by one uh, all his uh, four children. The last one uh, which was beheaded was the little one, which you can see it uh, right near his father. His father keep his hand uh, on his head. And this last one said, Father, uh, I will became, uh, I want to, to keep my life because the Sultan said, I will offer you the life if you are uh, switching to the Muslim religion. And because they refused to do it and to die in the Christian religion, the last son, which was, the, which was actually a, a boy, uh, he said to his father to let him become a Muslim just to keep his life. And the answer of his father, it was, no, son, you have to die in your, uh, in your Christian religion because this is how our Lord Jesus Christ will, uh, will want it. No, because you are Christian and you have to die as a Christian. You, you haven't switched your religion to the Muslims. So they were executed, all of them. The bodies were thrown into the Black Sea. Uh, from where we were uh, uh, taken back by, uh, by their, uh, their servants and their family, and they were buried uh, into a church in, uh, in Bucharest, which is now uh, into the center of Bucharest. For this, uh, for this event, they, become, uh, they became uh, martyrs of the um, Romanian Orthodox Church, and um, they, uh, they are now celebrated in, um, in Romania and in every, in every church in here. Continuing our way uh, to the altar, I will tell you that the way to the altar is usually guarded by, by Saint Michael, Archangel Michael. You can see it uh, right above uh, this beautiful icon of Virgin Mary with, uh, with baby Jesus. It's an icon which is uh, silver uh, plated, as you can see, are painted only the, um, uh, the faces of uh, Virgin Mary and of Jesus Christ and everything else, it's, um, it's plated and it's worked in, uh, in silver. And of course, in here, it's a small uh, relic box with the relics of, uh, for example, here it's a relic of the Saint Cross, of the Saint uh, Evangelist Marcus, Saint uh, Apostle Andrew is the one which uh, uh, Christianized uh, the Romanians and many many other precious relics of the of the Christian saints. Of course, uh, on the other side, you will see the icon of uh, Archangel Gabriel, because Gabriel and Michael are usually uh, guarding the way uh, to the altar, guarding our way to God to Christ. And here it's a very beautiful throne, which is. Uh, uh, it's a seat reserved for the Bishop of uh, Transylvania in case that he wants to attend to the, uh, to the, to the religious service. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Polly. Uh, the majority of the colors um, now nowadays are um, are chemically made, are not uh, made from uh, from plants. Like for example, we have from lapis lazuli in um, in Voronezh Monastery, into the north of Romania. Uh, yes, uh, it's a it's a true European Renaissance uh, in here, as you said. But I want to continue because I have some other stories to tell. Here, for example, we have a big icon of the born of Jesus Christ. You can see Christ into the cave. Uh, it's because of my, uh, my gimbal, Tony, and I'm sorry, I have to buy a, a new one. 
okay, so it's a Virgin Mary with, uh, with the cows, the animals, and Christ inside of the, inside of the cave. And around, you can see here, the three kings coming uh, with gifts for the new king. And of course, the angels, the archangels, and the star of Christmas, okay, above of the cave where Christ was born. We are very close here to the, to the altar, and our way is somehow ending. Here you can see the chairs and this beautiful uh, piece of furniture where usually are staying the books from where uh, um, the helper of the priests are, uh, are, are singing during the religious service. In the Orthodox religious service, we are singing very, very much uh, everything that uh, uh, we are doing during the religious service. I will come back to this. Uh, here we are, have the military saints called like this because they are carrying weapons and because they uh, they fight against the um, against the evil and against of the enemies of Christianity. Uh, here it's another very important icon from the Christian Orthodox Church. Is the icon called the Isis? Uh, it's God as a judge uh, blessing us uh, between uh, Saint John the Baptist and Virgin Mary, which are praying for our sins. Uh, into the day uh, of, uh, of our judgment. Above, it's the meeting of uh, Virgin Mary with, uh, with her sister, Elizabeth. Uh, when, uh, when Elizabeth actually uh, saw Mary, she became uh, the, first, um, the first prophet, I can say, because uh, uh, John the Baptist, which uh, she was carrying in, in her womb, uh, was jumping by joy, uh, knowing that uh, his aunt, Virgin Mary, is coming uh, and he, she is pregnant with baby Jesus, uh, our, uh, our Savior. Here, uh, I told you that our way uh, to meet Jesus Christ is ending here in front of the altar, in front of this iconostasis, if I can call it with a Greek name. I will tell you exactly everything about it, but till there, you can see Christ, it's above us, is looking for us, and uh, it's in, inside of a very powerful symbol. So the image of Jesus Christ, it's inside of a circle, which is a, which is a, which is a sign of perfection, because the circle doesn't have beginning, doesn't have an end, and it's also the symbol of heaven, and it's inscribed in two squares. The square, it's the symbol of the earth because of the fourth element which composing the earth, uh, the air, the fire, the, the dirt, and, um, and the flames. And two, uh, two squares, one over the other, will give us an octagon. And as you know, God created the world in seven days, and the eighth day, it's considered to be the day of resurrection of Jesus Christ. So it's like a symbol of, uh, of, of our resurrection. So that's why Christ is inside of this, uh, of this symbol. He's surrounded by all the, by all the orders of, uh, of angels. You can see also the, the cherubims here with three pair of wings and also having small dots on, on, on some of the wings. Those are the eyes used by the, uh, used by the cherubs to see everything that we do in here. Also, all the prophets, all the important, uh, all the important uh, angels, and uh, all the hierarchy of the of heaven is presented here. When Jesus Christ is doing the liturgy of the angels in heaven, and here above the above this iconostasis, which actually make the separation, if you want, between our world and the world beyond, the world where God uh, is staying, it's actually uh, like the curtain from the Temple of Moses, which was um, separating the people to the uh, Holy of the Holiness. So on this iconostasis, we have three doors. Each door is marked by a circle. On the center, we have the main doors, which are open by the priest 
uh, only during the uh, religious services because are considered to be the gates to heaven. To the lateral sides, we have the regular doors which are used by the, by the priest and by all the other uh, attenders to the religious service to enter and to come out from the altar. The main doors are guarded by the icons of uh, Virgin Mary with baby Jesus and of Christ uh, himself preaching because uh, he have an open book in his left hand and uh, with uh, his right hand he's, uh, he's blessing us. Also, these lateral doors are guarded by the same icons of Archangel Michael and Archangel Gabriel. And also here we have the icon of St. John the Baptist. Inside of the altar, usually are not allowed to enter, that uh, only the priests, and also only the men, not the women, because uh, you know the older uh, belief that in some days of the month, the women having some, uh, some medical problems, uh, they could not enter inside of the uh, holy uh, place of the altar, uh, being uh, not clean. That's the term. On the iconostasis, on the superior part, we have the icons which are representing the main moments from the life of Jesus Christ, starting with the Annunciation. You can see it uh, here to the left, the first one. Then the moment when Jesus Christ is presented to the temple. Archangel Gabriel telling to Virgin Mary that she will have a child which will be the Son of God. The moment of birth, you can see it in, uh, into the cave, will be a little bit shaky, but that because I, I have to stay into a very uncomfortable position. Uh, here is the baptism of Jesus Christ in the waters of Jordan. Here is the Last Supper, and I will show you the last images. Again, the transfiguration to the left side. Jesus on the donkey entering into the Jerusalem, the descending to heaven, the, to, uh, to hell after the resurrection of Christ. Here, uh, his mother. And here, the last one is the adormition of his mother, the moment when uh, uh, Virgin Mary is uh, it's, it's taken with, uh, with her own, own body, is transported to heaven after she is uh, not passing away, but uh, sleeping, we saying. And here above are the sixth of the 12 uh, apostles. You can see six here and six on the other side. And up there are the main prophets of the, of the Christian church. Finally, on this side, you can see the big icon representing Jesus Christ um, going to hell to liberate all the people from hell after his resurrection and transporting them in heaven and also the military saints and one of the most important icons of, uh, of the Greek uh, Orthodox Church is this icon of uh, Constantine, the Emperor Constantine and his mother Helen uh, together with the cross where Jesus was crucified and uh, a cross which was founded by, uh, by them. So, uh, also, as you can see into the church, we have some chairs, but uh, usually, traditionally, that because uh, this is a, this is a, a church which uh, try to adapt a little bit to the times, to the modern times, that's why we have stairs, or we, we have uh, chairs into the church, but usually we are attending to the religious service standing. Uh, the religious service into the Greek Orthodox Church have about... Uh, three hours, two hours and a half, something like this, two, uh, two three hours. But the difference uh, with the other religion is the fact that we can attend to the same liturgy, um, not necessarily since the beginning. We can came exactly as we decided to came. We can stay exactly as we decided to stay, and then we can leave. So nobody is forcing us to stay for three complete hours uh, to the religious service, to the liturgy. We can come and go as we, uh, as we decide. So uh, that's why uh, we usually uh, stay uh, in, uh, in feet, in front, of the, in front of the altar. But uh, 
here uh, they have chairs. You can, uh, you can take a seat if you want. And also it's a very small pillow just to put it under your knees because you have to kneel um, during, of the, during of the same liturgy in the moments when, for example, the priest is uh, reading from the gospel. So um, this is one of the characteristics of the, um, of the um, Orthodox Church. And also the same uh, here on this side are staying the men. On the other side of the church are staying the women. So uh, the community is divided in two. Um, a very <laughs> a priest told me once uh, that uh, they decided to do it like this uh, just because that uh, if the men and women will stay mixed during of the religious service, they will talk or will flirt one to the other. <laughs> so <laughs> then uh, they will not pay attention to the priest anymore. So. Uh, that's why this, uh, this division. Now I will uh, get out from the church and I will uh, continue to tell you a couple of stories uh, about the fact that after those first uh, seven ecumenical councils of the, uh, of the church, uh, which was done uh, in the first years of the Christianity, uh, under the leadership of the emperor of Constantinople, Constantine, and all the others which came after him, um, they decided which Gospels to use, which, um, um, which are the rules for the religious service into the, into the Orthodox Church. Uh, and the people which was living at Rome, into the west of Europe, with the, the scholars, with the intellectuals from the Greek world, was uh, talking together, was studying the same sources of inspiration, the same books, so they speaking Greek and Latin. Uh, it was a very strong communion between them. And then, starting with the invasion of the, uh, of the migrating nations, everything starting to, uh, to be destroyed in between, uh, in between them, till the moment when uh, the break starting to, starting to appear extremely brutal into the life of the Christian church. And uh, that because uh, the Greeks doesn't study in Latin, because the Latins doesn't study in Greek, because this communion, this, com this communication in between the bishops and the priests um, at the level of the theology of the Christian church starting to, uh, to be breaking up little by little. So, uh, thank you, Polly and Sylvia and Jan and Dee. And um, this, uh, this break, little by little, was, uh, was transformed in 1054 after the Fourth Crusade. Uh, this is a part of the new cemetery of this church. Uh, into the Fourth Crusade, it was happened the fact that uh, all the, um, all the crusaders was detoured from their way to, um, to Jerusalem, to Constantinople, to rob it and to, uh, and to destroy it and to conquer it for a pretty, uh, for a pretty long uh, period of time. And because of the fact that those uh, crusaders actually killed uh, and uh, robbed their uh, Christian brothers from the east, this, at the level of the of the people, of the common people, uh, finalized this uh, this break, this schism, into the Christian Church, which was ended uh, in 1054 when uh, the Pope excommunicated the Patriarch from Constantinople, and uh, was at his turn excommunicated by the Patriarch from, from Constantinople as well. Uh, here on the exterior side are some uh, are some images, are some paintings of the saints, for example, uh, Evangelist John, in here, uh, Evangelist John, Marcus, uh, this is uh, Peter and Paul, on the other side. Uh, Peter and Paul are here because we are exactly uh, on the back of the altar of the church. The window, the stained glass window that you can see uh, in front of you, it's uh, the one which gives uh, the access to the, to the altar. Uh, Peter and Paul are usually uh, depicted here near the altar. You, you will find it in many Christian churches painted like this. As well, uh, we have Evangelist Matthew in here and Evangelist Lucas painted in um, painted mosaic uh, made by, by mosaic. Apostle Jacob, Apostle Bartolomeu, and Apostle Philip are also uh, presented here on the, on the exterior side of the church. So uh, since the moment of the schism of the 1054, the, um, the Christians 
I, I, I will try to show you the church from, uh, from a distance. Uh, the Christians were split in between the Catholic Church um, and the Orthodox Church, as it is known, uh, our church uh, from Romania and from this part of Europe today. Uh, Romania after Russia is the largest uh, Orthodox Church uh, of the world because uh, we Romanians are about 20 million and in, in, into a percentage of about 85%, 90%, uh, we are Greek Orthodox. So uh, that's why I'm saying, and also as a curiosity, uh, we are the single Latin nation, because I repeat, we are Latins. Uh, we, are, we, we were formed from the mixture between Romans and Dacians, our ancestors. So we are the single Latin nation, which is Greek Orthodox. And the Polish are the single Slavic nation, which is Roman Catholic. Being known that uh, in the majority, the Slavs, like the Serbians, the Bulgarians, the Russians, the Ukrainians, uh, they, are, uh, they are Greek Orthodox, all of them. So uh, we are a Latin, a Latin nation into, the, into a sea of Slavs. And we resisted here uh, so many centuries. With, uh, with the faith, uh, with, the, with the religion, with the Greek Orthodox religion, uh, despite all the, all the threatenings from the Ottomans and uh, from all other uh, invaders, which came, uh, which tried to, to conquer us and to make us to, uh, to drop off our, uh, our Christian religion, they didn't make it because we are pretty stubborn in, in matters of, uh, of religion, of traditions. So we are not, uh, we are not uh, letting uh, put it down so, uh, so easy. I will try to offer you another image of the whole church. This is the sport hall of the, of the town where I live. And this is a very small park for the children. And this is the church. You can see it from this, uh, from this place, just to... Uh, just to take a picture okay uh, i hope the tour it was interesting for you i was trying to to offer you something uh, something different that uh, you are usually uh, seeing in uh, in here the church was built mark uh, was ended to be built like uh, six seven years ago the the towers are uh, are gold plated um and uh, and the theme which was used uh, to cover the, the towers uh, and the domes, uh, it, was made in, uh, it was made in Ukraine. Because uh, in Ukraine, near Kiev, it's uh, one of the most important uh, uh, centers of the icon uh, makers and painters from, uh, from here. Hello. Uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad, Mark, you, you like it. I'm glad you like it. And... Uh, if you want, uh, maybe I will do I will do another another tour like this one, and maybe this time I will uh, I will invite for an interview on the young priest of this church to tell you with his words uh, many many other things uh, about the about the church that he is um, the seed that he is serving. Thank you all of you. Uh, I'm glad you liked the tour, and. Uh, Probably uh, I will do that again in about two or three weeks. Mark, if you think it will be a, a great idea to have an interview with the priest, why not? Uh, he's actually, he, he knew obviously <laughs> many other things uh, comparing with me. So he can, uh, he can tell you a lot of uh, other stuff. Uh, thank you all of you for, uh, for following me, uh, for thanking me for this tour. And... Uh, Yes, I am. Yes. <laughs> uh, if it's in Romanian, uh, it, it was a very good uh, translation of the... Uh, if you are not Romanian. I wish you, all of you, a very good uh, day, a very good evening, and a very good night. And I hope uh, you will follow me again for the next tours. God bless you all.